Hi everyone, it's Professor Rako here, uh, continuing our lessons on the accounting cycle. Uh, so this is our third uh, lesson in the accounting cycle, which as we talked about in the first video, will be one of your early chapters in intermediate. Uh, the accounting cycle, uh, if you look up here at the top of the page, just kind of the how we go about doing that. Uh, you know, we've talked about the accounting equation and how transaction affect, affect the accounting equation. But now what we're going to do is get into uh, actual journal entries and then so journal entries are your first step okay we just do those chronologically as they happen so uh, you know if a transaction occurs we record the journal entry uh, and just do them in in the order that they occur all right the second process will be posting to the general ledger all right so this can be done like at the end of a period at the month quarter or uh, whatever period you're looking at all right so this is kind of our first stage of summarizing our information for the month or period or whatever we're looking at. Uh, the third step is the trial balance, which is just uh, kind of a listing of all our accounts to ensure our debits and credits equal. And then we do our adjusting journal entries. So this is probably the hardest part. Uh, we'll get to these in the later videos. Uh, but adjusting journal entries typically give students the most trouble. These are our accrual entries and deferrals and things like that. And we'll, we'll, we'll cover those in detail uh, in a later lesson. Uh, and then we have the adjusted trial balance, which is just a new trial balance that takes into account the uh, adjusted journal entries. And then we're ready to do our financial statements, and then we finish off with some closing uh, entries to close out accounts that need to be closed. And we'll get to all this in detail. All right, so what we're going to do is just walk through some journal entries. So if you're an intermediate student, once again, this should be reviewed for you. Uh, if you're somebody that's just in a principles of financial or a financial accounting class, uh, this will be new. But uh, once again, it is the foundation. You have to be able to do journal entries, understand normal account balances, uh, and things like that. So let's just walk through our transactions here. All right, so if we look at our first one here, we issued stock for $80,000 in cash. All right, so when we do this, if we're getting cash, always use your keywords. It says we're getting cash, so we're debiting cash for eighty thousand. All right, uh, and we issued stock, so we'll just call that common stock for eighty thousand. All right, so if you think about what's going on here, uh, let's scroll down here a little bit. The uh, company is issuing stock. All right, they're issuing stock to uh, increase their capital. Okay, so they get cash, an inflow of cash. And uh, now they have money to go about uh, buying stuff and things like that. All right. So once again, cash is an asset. It's a normal debit balance. Common stock is an equity balance. It's a normal credit balance. So that's why we debit cash and credit common stock because both of those accounts are increasing. All right. So now that we have this cash, we use some of it to buy some machinery. All right. So remember, machinery is an asset. All right. So we'll debit machinery for 11000 And then it says we're paying cash for it. All right. So remember... Cash is a normal debit balance, so this credit right here reduces it. So now if you look at our two, we did have 80000 in cash. We just spent eleven, so now we have $69,000 in cash. All right, so this is, you know, if you think about the accounting equation, we have an asset machinery going up, an asset cash going down by the same amount, so the accounting equation holds. All right, our next step, we purchase inventory, $20,000 on account. All right, so once again, use your keywords. When you see on account, that means we're not paying for it right now, all right? So we purchased inventory. So inventory is an asset. So we'll debit it because it's a normal debit balance. And anytime, like I said, on account means we instead of crediting cash here, we're going to credit accounts payable, which means we owe that $20,000, all right? The next one, purchased land and signed a $22,000 promissory note. All right, so land is an asset. We're going to debit land. For twenty-two thousand, and we signed a note, meaning we didn't pay for it. A note just means we're going to pay for it later, and there'll probably be some interest in, uh, that goes along with it. All right, so note payable is a liability, which is a normal credit balance, so that increases it. All right, our last one on this page, we sold eight thousand of inventory. So uh, remember, we had the inventory that we purchased up top. Now we sold that, and notice we sold eight thousand of it. But we sold it for twelve thousand, so that's just the markup. So we marked it up basically fifty percent or four thousand dollars. So we paid eight for it. We sold it for twelve, right? So that would be our profit. All right. So whenever you sell inventory, there's two transactions. One, you need to record the sale, right? So we sold it for twelve thousand. So we have cash coming in the door, twelve thousand, and we'll just call this sales revenue for twelve thousand. 
all right the uh, but we also got rid of some of our inventory all right, so we need to take inventory off the books, and we do this by debiting cost of goods sold, CGS cost of goods sold, for eight thousand. So that's essentially a expense account on our, your income statement, and then we uh, will take the inventory off the books. All right, so now we have twelve thousand in inventory. We had twenty thousand up here, and now we have sold eight thousand, so we have twelve thousand left. All right, so if you think about it. Sales revenue, so these two accounts right here, sales revenue and cost of goods sold, both go in our income statement. So our profit is, we have sales revenue, less cost of goods sold, so our profit on this transaction was $4, I mean, sorry, $4,000. All right, if we flip over to the next page, all right, and we'll go out through these. So we per, uh, paid for half of the inventory purchased of us. So remember, we bought, when we bought the inventory, we, paid, we bought it on account, and we haven't paid for it yet. All right, so now what we're going to do is pay for it. All right, so <clears throat> remember we had a credit to accounts payable, and we we're paying for twenty thousand, but we're paying half of it, so ten thousand. And now is when we have the credit to cash because we're actually paying a portion of what we owed. All right, next up, paid off the promissory note plus interest. All right, so remember when we bought the land, we signed a note for it, so we're now paying that note off. All right, so the note payable comes off the books all right so remember on the previous page we had a credit to note payable of 22 we now have a debit uh, to note payable of 22 which means that account is now zero but that makes sense because we're paying off what we owe so that account should be zeroed out now we also had interest and so we'll just call that interest expense remember all expenses go back to the first uh, accounting cycle video expenses are debit balances so that's why we have that and then we're paying for both so we're paying off the note plus the interest so we're paying twenty three thousand dollars all right our next one we sold some more inventory so this is going to look similar to the one on the previous page but notice here is we sold it on account all right so once again we marked it up fifty percent so two thousand uh, to sell it for six so we're going to have same journal entries for the most part the only difference is we're not getting cash right off the bat so we're still recording sales revenue but remember accounts receivable just means they're going to pay us later. A receivable means somebody owes us money. All right, and then we still have to do our cost of goods sold in inventory for the four thousand for the cost of the inventory. So once again, we made two thousand dollars on this transaction. All right, so our last few, uh, we collected thirty five hundred from customers with account balance. So uh, let me just scroll back up real quick. So here. Uh, Right here, they owed us six thousand dollars. We are now collecting a portion of that. So, how we go about doing that? So we're now receiving the cash. So I'm gonna debit cash for thirty-five hundred, and I'm gonna credit accounts receivable for thirty-five hundred. So they did owe us six. They just paid thirty-five. So they still owe us twenty-five hundred more uh, that we'll hopefully collect later. All right, we paid our employees. Okay. Uh, so we'll just call this salary and wages expense. So typically the difference uh, between salaries and wages is uh, salaries are people that are on salary. Wages are typically for people that are hourly. We don't really distinguish here, so we'll just lump them all together into salary and wages expense. It says we're paying them, so that means we're going to have a credit to cash for $2,300. All right, our last one is depreciation. All right, so anytime you have depreciation, your journal entry is always debit depreciation expense. Oops, don't need that last zero, sorry. And we credit accumulated depreciation. So I abbreviate that. That's accumulated depreciation. All right, and we'll get into more detail on depreciation, but this account right here is a what's called a contra asset account. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so this, you know, so these two pages are just some basic journal entries. Once again, if you're an intermediate student, hopefully this is just review for you. However, you know, your first test is going to be over all this stuff. And so you really want to get off because intermediate typically moves pretty quick for some people. And so you really want to get off, uh, on the right foot as far as your first test goes. Uh, you know, and typically that will cover the first three to four to five chapters. Uh, so there's a lot of information, but a lot of it is review. So it gives you a chance to really get off to a good start uh, if you kind of get ahead on this stuff. 
All right, so once again, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully this helps a little bit with just kind of remembering journal entries. Uh, if you like it, please hit the like button. Uh, I'd love if you subscribe to my channel. Uh, and hopefully I'll be posting more videos uh, throughout the whole intermediate, uh, uh, all the chapters in the book. Thanks.